Hello and welcome back. This month's highlight is definitely the new DuckDB Access Engine that has been released, enabling us to work with Parquet files, Delta Lake files, Apache Iceberg files, and more. We are going to dive into that and a bunch of other features as well. Let's get right into it. We are starting things off inside of SAS Information Catalog. And do not fear, this time I'm not haunting you about adding more metadata to your data. This time we are taking a look at the new and enhanced preview data tab. You might remember it was called sample data before. That's right. Now we get this enhanced view that lets us easily scroll hundreds, if not thousands of rows if we want to do that and enables us to work with our data even quicker than before. This also gives us more capabilities around hiding columns, pinning, sizing, and sorting them so that you can really dig into the details without ever having to leave the information catalog itself. If you need that deeper dive into the data, looking at row level content to help you identify if this is the correct data source for your specific use case. Now, from Information Catalog, we are going to be moving over to SAS Studio. In SAS Studio, we are going to be looking at the new DuckDB access engine that has been released. Now, the DuckDB engine comes with different capabilities. There's kind of two major things here. One is the ability to connect to plop storages on Azure, on GCP, and on AWS. But it also gives you the ability to interact with local um, files that you have on your NFS server, for example. That's what I'm going to be showing here just for simplicity's sake and also not having to hide any credentials in here from you so you can really see the full details. We are going to set things off with our classic lib name. We're giving it the name and then we specify the access engine, DuckDB. Next is the file path. And here you will see a big divergent depending on what you are working with. So there is different syntaxes and configuration options available if you are working with Azure, for example, versus AWS. In my case, it's pretty simple because it's just a path on my file system that's attached locally. And then I specify the file type that I want to turn into a library here. I'm going to be specifying per K, but there's also the ability to work with CSV, JSON, Delta, uh, Iceberg, and also DuckDB itself. And in my case, we are going to run this libname statement, and then we will see our additional library call test show up in my library connections over here. And looking into it, we can see there is six tables available inside of this library. So there's six corresponding parquet files on my file system that I'm working with. And we are going to take a look at this flights dash one million or one M um, data set that we will be working on. And it contains the flight data of a million different flights. Now we can simply set up a proc SQL, select distinct on these million rows, and you can see how quickly this returns to us. And taking a look at the log, we can see that this took us hardly any time to process through these million rows here. Depending on your data set, this enables you a lot of new capabilities. You can, for example, change the schema within DuckDB of your data set and run through snapshots. There is so much stuff to dig into. I highly recommend you check out the documentation, link in the description, of course, and then dive deeper from there. DuckDB really un unlocks a whole new way to work with these open source file formats then, then also building on top of architectures like lake houses, for example. Moving on, inside of SAS Studio, there is also a new URL parameter that you can specify. Now, you might have run across this, that you are inside of SAS Studio and you 
want to switch your compute context and then set it up to be working with a different one, well, now you can add this through a URL parameter and that will create or select that specific compute context for you and then start your SAS session. So you can kind of put bookmarks in there or quick links in some documentation to get the right compute context for the job. Taking a look at this, you do this by specifying the URL parameter sas-studio-server name and then equals the exact name specified of your compute context. Now you can see my copy automatically replaced the blanks or spaces in that name with the URL encoding, but you don't have to specify that. You can just leave the name as is, and now if I hit enter and accept the leaving of it, we will see SAS Studio reopening, and you can see SAS job execution compute context was selected for me before I had the SAS Studio compute context. I think this is a super cool way to help you automate more things, build on top of different auto exec files that are being used in the background for these different compute contexts, or even unlock different capabilities and options that have been specified. Maybe you have some compute contexts where you can use Python and others where you can't, or you have different versions of Python available with each compute context. This can really help you speed up these processes and make that switching less of a UI interaction and more of an automated process through the URL parameter. I really enjoy working with this. Moving on, let's give some shout outs to cool articles that have been written in the SaaS community. The first one that will also be making a return later on is Automate SAS Studio Flows documentation with Azure OpenAI in a custom step. Custom step being the key keyword here. And creating documentation for you is, of course, absolutely lovely because who likes writing documentation, right? Next up is a piece on how you can leverage differential privacy in order to avoid bias in synthetic data. This is a super interesting piece that helps you think more deeply on how you both generate synthetic data and also how you can assess it to make sure you have trusted processes in place when you're building models. And finally, something that is always an interesting topic and that is how you can get access to the stuff that's stored inside of SaaS content using the file name engine. This really can automate a lot of processes for you to make it easier to share, update, or delete content that has been created inside of SaaS content. Now, let's move on to new custom steps that have been released on the SaaS Studio Custom Steps repository. First up is the fork step. The fork step enables you to run different processes in parallel and then you can also wait for them to all finish running. This is great if you have a highly complex SAS Studio flow that could leverage parallel processes and you can just spin up more processes and SAS sessions in the background, wait for them to finish and then continue on from there. Next up is a custom step that helps you build custom steps. Now, the LM custom step generator with Azure OpenAI can help you to generate a new custom step just by prompting the large language model. That, I'm sure, is gonna be an absolute multiplier for building new and highly specific custom steps for you. And we are finishing things off with the custom step that relates to the article we started with, and that is LLM document studio flows with Azure OpenAI. And if you listen to what the article is about, you know what this custom step is all about. With that, thank you very much for spending the time with me. And I hope you can explore the awesome new unlocks for data with the DuckDB engine inside of this new SASVIA release. See you next time. Bye-bye.